Greetings, Epic Adventure Seekers. I'm Allie Bierman, your guide to demystifying your world. And you are joining us here today for Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. Today, it's just me and you and the teachings of the Buddha. And before we go there, I want to remind you, and you're going to hear this in what I'm talking about today, life is all about growing and what happens when you want to grow well you got to change and how do you make that happen well you can download my free gift step in a new direction it's a very short read that when you read it and you apply something new in there which you're definitely going to discover about today that's how your world changes. Today, I am talking with you about the teachings of the Buddha. Okay, the Buddha taught nonstop, right? It wasn't his job. It was his life mission. It was his purpose in the world to teach. So he was teaching all his life as a matter of fact, for 45 years. And he was known to have said, all of my teachings can be encapsulated in one sentence. One sentence. Who knows or has a clue what that one sentence could be? 45 years of teaching everything you've heard about in Buddhism. Well, here's a single sentence. Do I know what it is? All right. I'm sure at least one of you does. So here you go. He said, nothing is to be clung to as I, me, or mine. Now, what did he mean by that? Nothing is to be clung to as I, me, or mine. Well, if you take a look at every philosophy from the beginning of recorded time and oral histories before then, if you look at every religion, if you look at science, everybody's teaching the essence of the teachings it's all the same thing. It gets called by different terms in each of the different modalities, but it's all the same thing. When you cling to something, you're attached to it. So you'll find it called attachment or non-attachment, or you'll call it, let's see, what else? detaching, non-attaching, clinging to anything. So what happens when you're clinging to an idea? When you say, I think, listen to me, I know. Mine is the right way, pay attention. Over time, when you're into it's my idea, it's my thought, it's my way, it's the right way. What's happened is you're living in the illusion you've created yourself into a prison. How so? You forgot that your thoughts are just thoughts. And you've been thinking them over and over and over again for your whole life. You forgot they're just thoughts. And a whole lot of those thoughts aren't even yours. Somebody else put them into your head, into your being. They're just your beliefs. But here's where the illusion comes in. You think it's the truth. You think your thoughts, your beliefs are the truth and you live according to them. Do you realize 
that you spend 90% of your energy every day trying to convince others that I'm right. Often I'm right, you're wrong. Me, listen to me, because I'm the only one with the truth. It's mine. My way of doing things is the only right one. Yours is wrong. All of those are illusions. And because you think it's the truth, you're sticking prison bars all around yourself because you're not even aware that you're doing it. So when you realize they're just thoughts, they're just beliefs, and at the end of the day, you're tired because you've been trying to persuade other people to live life your way. Can you imagine how much energy is freed up for you when you know you don't have to do that anymore? Because <laughs> what you're claiming is truth. They aren't truths. How different will your life be when you choose new thoughts? So when you have a new thought, that leads to a new feeling. And where does a new feeling take you? A new feeling takes you to a new action. So if you believe you can't change, if you, and so many people do this, yes, they say, that's the way I am. I can't change or I'm too old to change. That's a whole lot of BS. BS being belief system. You can change like that in a moment by choosing to remember they're just thoughts and by choosing a different thought. <gasps> oh my goodness, what a novel idea, choosing a different thought. It's, <laughs> you probably are telling yourself something that it's not easy to do, can't do it. Many, many Many years ago, I wrote a paper distinguishing between the two voices playing in your head. And right now, the voice that you're calling me, I, my beliefs, my life, my way, I call it the commentator. Because you're not even listening to me. You are so lost in that prison and the commentator keeps you in that prison that you get everything I'm saying filtered through that little voice commenting on everything I'm saying. It's telling you whether or not it agrees with me. If I'm looking nice today, or if what I'm saying is nonsense, which if it doesn't go with your commentator who controls, who makes sure you don't change because it's your ego mind wanting to keep you stuck because otherwise it disappears. Yeah, it's afraid of disappearing because when your mind isn't working, you don't have any thoughts. You can't. So if you look across all belief systems out there, if you look across every spiritual system, they're teaching that you are not your mind. You are not your body. Well, what the heck are you? Well, different philosophies might call it something different, but the concept's always the same. It's awareness. Your mind isn't aware of what's happening in your body. Your mind can't experience what's happening in your environment awareness does consciousness does conscious awareness which was never born and will never die because we are all one energy all one constant that goes on forever 
what is true was never born and never dies. And what isn't true doesn't really exist. I wanted to come on and throw that out to you because I think it's a whole lot to take in if these thoughts are new to you. But what I guarantee is if you read any philosophy out there, you go back to the ancient Greeks, you're going to learn the same thing. Now, recognize you can change your life and you can change it instantly. And you do that by changing your thought because it's just a thought that you believe, that you tell yourself is the truth. You want to break out into a world where you can be happier, where your world can look more like you say you want it to. What you got to do is change your belief. And your belief and your thought is yours. Now, the other day I went to print out something that was really, really important to me. And I really wanted to have it. I wanted to have it right then because I wanted to use it for something. And my printer kept saying, you're out of ink. And there were four different ink cartridges in the printer. And it said three out of the four were dry. And it kept saying that every time I asked it to print. And I really, really wanted it. And I thought, okay, I don't believe I'm out of ink. And I really want to print this tonight, right now. So I pressed print again, and guess what? It printed. And it happened to have been a short book. And it printed out the entire book. No more, we're out of ink. So I put a different thought out there and guess what happens? Your thoughts going out there. The universe has a job of bringing you what you're focusing on. But you gotta direct the universe to do that by letting it know what you want. A really good avenue to take you in there is feeling happy and grateful for all that is in your world and for all that is not in your world. Awareness. When you become aware of the thoughts that you're thinking, when your world's looking away, you don't want it to look. Just stop right then and choose a different thought. Well, I'm going to leave that thought with you because my intention was not to overload you, but to just wake you up. So during the day, just become aware. Rhonda Byrne and her teacher and many of the people out there are saying, how do you create that habit? By ask, say, am I aware? And that will take you out of what so many people call a monkey mind. I know that term's kind of new to me, but I've been hearing it a lot recently. I just call it the commentator. So and when you see that you're listening to the commentator, and by the way, the commentator's telling you, commentator, little voice, what are you talking about? She's nuts. Let's get out of here. I'm hanging out. I'm leaving now. That's the little voice. That's the commentator. So when you catch yourself being caught, being imprisoned by the beliefs, that's when you say, hold on, I want to have a different thought right now because I get to do that. So every time I find a certain behavior pattern that's been with me most of my life, I say, whoa, I'm doing it again. I choose not to do it. So I stop it right there. I stop it and I replaced it with a different thought and you can do that too and it's simply a habit to create
Thank you so much for joining me here today. And be sure you check the show notes, get the link to Step in a New Direction to our webpage where you can watch or listen to any episode of our show. And also to join our Facebook group because we have some cool, fun people in there. If you do me a really big favor, and if you just share this show with two friends to get the word out, it would be doing you a favor because then you have friends with whom you can talk about this stuff and you'll be helping your friends to awaken, to look at life a different way because there's so much more to life than just the one we see with the blinders on because of the prisons in which we keep ourselves. I look forward to being here with you next week. And remember to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-I, every moment, because nothing, not a thing happens outside of you. It all happens within. You see within, you hear within, you taste, touch, smell within.